After all, Vulcans still can't escape the tribulation from BE-4 engines. Last Thursday evening was supposed to see a new rocket launch. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan roared to life for the first time engine test fire at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. But unfortunately, United Launch Alliance had to call off a test firing of the company's first flight rated Vulcan Centaur rocket to troubleshoot a problem with the booster engine's ignition system. As planned, this flight readiness firing test 41 was going to be the first time the combined Vulcan first stage, topped with a Centaur second stage, would light up on the launch pad, although held down with restraints. The six-second firing would also test out the company's pre-launch timelines and procedures, propellant loading, and a large target of six seconds of engine burn producing close to a million pounds of thrust. FRF is really about confirming this operational readiness of the integrated system, launch vehicle, ground systems, facilities, and the associated software. In addition, we will demonstrate the ability to successfully execute the engine start sequence and validate our hot fire abort response procedures, said Dylan Rice, ULA's Vulcan launch conductor in a press release. However, during the countdown, the team observed a delayed response from the booster engine ignition system that needs further review prior to proceeding with the flight readiness firing, ULA said in a statement Thursday. We will be rolling the rocket back to the vertical integration facility to gain access to the booster ignition system. Timing and response doesn't look right. Need to understand it, ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno posted in an update on Twitter. ULA rolled the rocket on its mobile launch platform back to the vertical integration facility on Friday. The company's not set a new target date for the six-second test firing of the first stage's two BE-4 engines, a prerequisite for the inaugural launch of the Vulcan Centaur rocket designed to replace ULA's Atlas and Delta rocket families. The team will continue to review data and determine when Vulcan can roll back to the pad to conduct the flight readiness firing, ULA said. Talking about BE-4 engines, they've already been tested at Blue Origins facilities, but have yet to test fire while attached to the rocket. Even worse, to make the deadline, Blue Origin seemed to take the somewhat risky step of shipping the engine to its customer before completing full qualification testing. One of the engines has already had to be removed and analyzed after issues with its power output were detected. The changes included adjusting a setting with the ground hydraulic pressure, changing the topping rate for liquid oxygen, and changing the flow of purge and chill gas to the BE-4 engine igniters, according to Tori Bruno, chief executive officer. This little rain hasn't been the only setback Vulcans faced in its testing campaign. The rocket uses a mix of liquid natural gas, or LNG, and liquid oxygen, aka LOX, as propellants. And during a tanking test on the pad earlier this month, teams found an issue when flowing propellants through an igniter in one of the BE-4 engines. To address it, the rocket was rolled back to the vertical integration facility to adjust a handful of parameters and set points for a reliable flight readiness firing count, Bruno said via Twitter. The teams run through terminal count and restrain the rocket on the launch platform, run the engines up short of full power, and hold for several seconds to perform the test. Well, ULA is probably not too unfamiliar with all this, as BE-4 caused Vulcan to delay in the first place. The company unveiled the Vulcan rocket in 2015. Then, targeting a first launch of the new vehicle in 2019, ULA first agreed to buy the engines from Blue Origin back in 2014. It was a bold bet by ULA, a blue blood in space launch, on a new entrant to the market. But with the BE-4 engine, Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos was promising a relatively low-cost, high-performing engine with a power output compared to a space shuttle main engine. At the time of this initial agreement, Blue Origin said the BE-4 would be ready for flight by 2017. ULA planned to launch their first Vulcan test in 2020. Fueled by methane, the BE-4 engine is a large and capable machine that's one of the most powerful U.S. rocket engines made in decades. It's got a greater thrust than the space shuttle's main engine. And, by all accounts, developmental versions of the BE-4 engine have performed well on the test stand. Unfortunately for ULA, the engine was more than five years late. During that time, Blue Origins only delivered Pathfinder versions of the engines to ULA, which the companies use for fit tests with a Vulcan rocket. But there's no substitute for actual flight engines, which are necessary to perform a static fire test and clear the vehicle for launch. It wasn't until later last year that Blue Origin completed delivery of BE-4 rocket engines for the first ULA Vulcan launch. But the results, we know. Vulcan has just delayed again. So why are the engines late in the first place? There appears to be several factors contributing to this, some of which can be traced to an at times distracted founder, Jeff Bezos. 
and some to those Bezos hired to run Blue Origin back in 2017, Bob Smith, and also due to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the most persistent problems, sources said, is that the BE4 engine testing and development program has been relatively hardware poor in recent years. This means that the factory in Washington hasn't had enough components to build the development engines, and this has led to extended periods during which no testing has occurred in Texas. It was surprising to hear this back in the spring of 2017 when Blue Origin stated publicly that its development program was hardware rich. After arriving as CEO in late 2017, Smith appears to have focused on a more substantial reorganization of Blue Origin's leadership rather than hardware development. Other programs were prioritized too, so the BE4 team didn't get all the resources and freedom that it needed to proceed at full throttle. All in all, this marriage probably was wrong, but hopefully it won't kill Vulcan. A lot's riding on this rocket. Vulcan's designed to replace ULA's entire fleet of rockets, which at the beginning of its development in 2014 included Delta IV Heavy and Atlas V. Though no longer offered for new missions, Atlas V and Delta IV Heavy are the only legacy ULA rockets still in service. They're expected to continue to fly for the next couple years. Vulcan's bigger, more powerful, and cheaper than the rockets it's replacing, and a launch from the same pad used by Atlas V. On top of streamlining the company's products and reducing costs, Vulcan's use of Blue Origin engines is a national security consideration. Atlas V flies with Russian-made RD-180 engines, a point that's resulted in pressure from various public and private organizations to move to American-made hardware. Vulcan's first mission, known as Certification 1, is a test flight to meet certification requirements to launch U.S. Space Force national security missions in the future. Scheduled to fly on Vulcan's Certification 1 mission are two prototype broadband satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper, a proposed constellation of over 3,000 satellites that will provide internet services to customers around the globe, kind of like SpaceX's Starlink. Also on board is a payload destined for the moon. Pittsburgh-based Astrobotics Peregrine Commercial Lunar Lander. According to NASA, the lander, a part of the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, initiative, will study the lunar exosphere, regolith, magnetic fields, and radiation, and test advanced solar arrays. The lunar lander will also carry a secondary payload to the surface of the moon for Celestis Memorial space flights. It features 150 capsules carrying ashes, DNA samples, and messages from clients around the world, including that of Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry, his wife Majel Barrett Roddenberry, and Star Trek actor James Scotty Doohan. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time. Bye!